Hey, Monsa. Hi. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can. Thank you for joining. So th this was actually our icebreaker that I put in for today while other people are joining. So what is your favorite or most recent or most anticipated road trip? So I was just saying that that this year we, we drove from Houston, Texas to Cincinnati, Ohio, where my parents live and we're going to do do the holidays with them for the next couple of days. So it took us took us three days and we stopped in New Orleans, Louisiana and Birmingham, Alabama. And, um, and so, um, yeah, usually I can do road trips, but sometimes they get a little bit long. So anyway, while we wait for anybody else to join, anybody else got some favorite road trips or a most recent one or one you're looking forward to? Well, my, my, I just had one when I drive from my city in the middle of the country to Sao Paulo. Uh, was my first time there. Yeah. And yeah, I never have been done a, a road trip by car. So I really enjoy because here in Brazil, there are a lot of mountains and yeah. the view is amazing. So yeah, I really enjoy. That's great. Did you go by yourself or did you go with? Some friends or with with my wife. Yeah, yeah nice, nice, very nice. Good. Anybody else? I was supposed to go and do field work this year in the Himalaya. Oh wow! So that had that was supposed to be a five month long road trip, but that didn't happen. So hopefully next year. <laughs> next year, right? everything's next year, right? <laughs> yeah. And Monsa, where do you live? So I live in New Haven, Connecticut. Oh great. Okay, very good. Well, we're glad you're able to join this week. Colin, you got one? Yeah, um, recently I went home for a little bit, um, which is Yankton, South Dakota, and it was nice to drive because it wasn't winter weather driving, so that was nice. Yeah. I was able to see some family, so. That's cool. Yeah, road trips, I've uh, been a fan of them for a while, and I've got I've got kids now, it changes things a little bit, but you know, back in the early days when you could just hit the road with your friends and be gone and come and go when you want, it was, it was fun. It's a little harder now, but all good. All right, let's see. Let me see if anybody else, let me pause my share, my screen share real quick. And I'm going to see if uh, anybody else needs help joining. Um, if not, we're pretty close here to the five minute mark. We can get started. And Monsa, did you did you join a previous cohort and, and just opted for this one this time or how, how has your experience been so far? You're on mute, by the way. So I, I missed the first class of this cohort. Okay. So I'm just joining now. Perfect, okay. And I don't know that the video has made it online yet. I haven't seen, but I think uh, John is working on that. So if you want to, he said he, I think he's editing it and hopefully he edits out all the weird parts. Um, okay. We'll see. Um, I'm here, I'm here chatting with, uh, with Chun Li, who's also in our cohort and she's, um, she's trying to join. So if we'll give her just another second to see. Um, Just bear with me. Okay, one second here. I'm going to send Chun Li the link. And then we will get started here. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for your patience while we're getting underway here. And as I share my screen. All right. Okay. Are we good? Everybody can see? Excellent. Awesome. Okay. Well, let me 
then uh, jump right into what we're going to talk about today. I've got uh, an agenda up here, so we'll do, we did our icebreaker. I wanted to put up our housekeeping reminders that we had last week. Um, then we'll talk about where we left off last week and then just dive into chapter three, which is data visualization. I've got some exercises for everybody to go over. And then I've got a couple of parts uh, called out here, one for statistical transformation, which hopefully we can get some discussion around and some I can get some help in understanding that and communicating those concepts. Um, then just another slide about getting help and then next week. All right, cool. So some housekeeping reminders, you can look over these. Video camera is optional, but encouraged. Um, as I mentioned before, I, I go try to go a little bit fast on purpose, but if something doesn't make sense or you need help, just slow me down. No problem there. Um, a reminder to take time to learn the theory. And I encourage everybody to do the chapter exercises and plan on teaching one of the lessons one week, okay? In fact, next week would probably be a good one in case there's any volunteers, because I may be on the road headed back to Houston at that point. Hey, Chun-Li, you here with us? Made it? Perfect. All right, good. All right, so then jumping into what we had worked on last week. So if you'll remember, we looked at, at uh, we did a plot. We plotted out a visualization last week, and uh, we used this code down here at the bottom to generate the visualization, okay? We had to install the tidyverse package if we hadn't already, and then we loaded the tidyverse in, in that session. Um, and then we typed in that code and it generated a visualization, which was this one. Everybody remember, remember doing this one? Came out looking something like this? All right, so here's the code, okay. So in picking, uh, what we're gonna do this week is break down each of these segments a little bit more detail, try to understand how they interact with each other and how we as coders or programmers, whatever you want to call it, uh, talk about how we can influence the way that the graph looks based on all these different pieces of code. All right, so data visualization in chapter three of the book. Okay, so the data source on this is the MPG data set. Okay, hopefully everybody got a chance to look through that data set a little bit over the last week. Um, get familiar with it. It's just about cars. It has like their make and their model, their uh, gas mileage, um, the size of their engine, different things like that, right? Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now, hopefully everybody has the R software launched and we can go and start typing some of this code in. Last week was this uh, line of code. But what I want us to do this week right now is type in this line of code. But before you do that, I want to call out some of the differences, okay? So note the following differences from last week's code versus this week's code, okay? For one, geome smooth is gone. So last week we had this part here with the plus sign and then geome smooth. That's not here anywhere now, so that's gone. Another one was this part that said mapping AES color equals class. That's now missing from the geome point. Okay, so last week we had geome point, and then within that we had mapping AES color equals class. Okay, so that's gone now as well. But in its place, we've added mapping AES X equals displacement engine engine size basically y equals highway mileage mileage and it's with the geom point section okay so that means that this part over sorry this part over here mapping equals aes x equals displacement y equals highway that used to be part last week that was part of the gg plot segment yeah and this week we've moved this part over into the geome point, okay? So, you, but, so everybody should be able to see how this part right here is exactly the same as this right here. It's just that last week it was part of the ggplot parentheses, and this week it's part of the geome point parentheses, okay? So those are some of the differences, okay? Everybody good? Stop me if that doesn't make sense or if you want me to explain it any other way or, or if you have any questions, okay? But if, as long as you get that, I'll give you a minute now to type in to R this week's, this code right here, okay? Remember case and capitalization matters. 
So go ahead and take a second to type all that in and then give me a thumbs up or a wave or something once, once you're good. Okay. And remember, before you type this in, there's one other piece of code that you have to that you have to run. Who? Uh, anybody want to volunteer? What What do you recall? The first piece of code that you have to run as soon as you launch R, before this will work. It's required the tidyverse library, right? Right. Library data. Uh, yeah. Library tidyverse. So let me just go back real quick. Make sure that you do this line specifically this section right here, make sure you, you run this piece of code before you run the rest of it, okay? The, and the reason is because the tidyverse has to exist before any of these keywords can be interpreted, okay? These are part of the tidyverse package. So if you haven't installed the tidyverse, or sorry, you haven't loaded the tidyverse, then none of these will work, okay? Did everybody run this? Does it look like this down here? Good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. No questions. Excellent. Very good. All right. So now we are off and running. Then we have the first, the first basic plot completed so far. Okay. <clears throat> All right. This next slide is is entitled ggplot dataset plus geom. Okay. And I call it out this way to make a distinction between these two segments of code. The first one being ggplot with the dataset as part of it. And then the second one being second one here being the geome, okay. And um, if you look over here at this part of the code, if you look over here at this part of the code, you can see we have ggplot, which is the first portion, and it has the data set listed in. Data is the MPG data set, yeah? and then following that we have geome point. And within the geom point line, we've got a, a part here called mapping equals AES. And then within the AES parentheses, we've got X equals displacement and Y equals highway. Yeah. All right. Let me read what, what, uh, what the authors wrote really quick about, about the interaction between these two lines. Okay? And they said with ggplot2, you begin a plot with the function ggplot. ggplot creates a coordinate system that you can add layers to. The first argument of ggplot is the data set to use in the graph. So ggplot data equals mpg creates an empty graph, but it's not very interesting, so I'm not going to show it here. You complete your graph by adding one or more layers to ggplot. The function geom underscore point adds a layer of points to your plot, which creates a scatter plot. ggplot2 comes with many geom functions that each add a different type of layer to a plot. You'll learn a whole bunch of them throughout this chapter. Okay. <clears throat> so as it said, the first layer is ggplot with the data set. The second layer is the, the kind of um, interaction or the visualization of this data set that you want to employ. Okay? In this case, we're talking about a scatter plot, which the code for that is geom underscore point makes a scatter plot. Okay. Um, but that's by all means not the only way you can not that's not necessarily where you need to stop. You can also add something on top of that, for instance, geom underscore smooth. And there's an argument under there, which is se equals false, which we can talk about in a second. But what this does is it, it first it consumes the MPG data set. <clears throat> then it adds a layer, a scatter plot layer, as you've described it here. And then it adds a geom underscore smooth layer, which is a line that goes through that scatter point, that, 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 that scatter plot. Okay. So you, in, in this code, you have three layers. In this code, you have two layers. They all start with the data set. And then whichever type of visualization you'd like to add one on top of the other. Okay. Good. All right. So then moving on to the next one, we're now adding in this little segment here that is listed as aesthetic. So ggplot data set plus the geom and the aesthetic. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. So, so the aesthetic 
for the genome point is written under here. Aesthetic is abbreviated with AES, and there's arguments that go into the aesthetic, the displacement on the x-axis and the highway mileage on the y-axis. The authors wrote this. They said, an aesthetic is a visual property of the objects in your plot. Aesthetics include things like the size, the shape, or the color of your points. You can display a point in different ways by changing the values of its aesthetic properties. Okay. <clears throat> so if we look at geome point, for instance, there's a whole lot of aesthetics that can go into, into the plot. It doesn't just have to be x and y you could also do alpha which is transparency you can do color you can do fill group shape size stroke um, any of these now it turns out that that the the graph that you created just a minute ago <clears throat> used a lot of the default aesthetics for everything except x and y okay you did specify x and y meaning meaning the uh, how you wanted to display what was on the x-axis or which column from your data set goes on the x-axis and which column from your data set goes on the y-axis. Okay, So that was called out specifically. But it took defaults for alpha. The transparency defaults to 100% transparency. The color defaults to black. The fill defaults to, um, I think, non-existent. I'm kind of making that up. Um, shape defaults to to these these dots size defaults to a certain size that these dots are okay so if you wanted to change any of these any of these if you wanted a different transparency or if you wanted to use a different shape you could add on to this as to this aesthetic all uh, different values for the different aesthetics and we'll do that in just a second as well okay make sense good okay so you build out how you want it to look by adding on aesthetics to each of the uh, each of the geom layers okay. all right okay so we're going to do a practice this is the code that we've already typed in just now okay and your assignment now is to adjust this code so that the cars class and the class is a variable or a column in the data set dictates the color of the point okay so let me go back one just one here one of the aesthetics that is currently defaulted is color. <clears throat> All we're gonna do is override that by, by uh, letting the class variable or the class column in the data dictate the color of the point, okay? So I'll give you a second to work on that or if you, if you wanna ask a question, um, if you have any trouble with it, just speak up, okay? How's it looking? Anybody have an answer? Colin? What did you come up with? Um, so, do you want me to share my screen or do you want me? Uh, maybe just describe it because I've got the answer here real quick. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so, it's you just have the normal GG plot on one line with your data equals MPG. And then you have the geome point. And then you have your mapping with your aesthetic. And then in that aesthetic like function, you add color equals class. OK, exactly right. So something like this, is that what you had? Yeah, OK. 
Everybody get that? Makes sense. And so you, you're making a specification as to as to how you want the color to be determined, and you're using the class variable. Okay. Good. All right. So let's do one more. Adjust the code so that the so that the car's fuel type this dictates the shape of the point. Okay. And fuel type. Um, remind me. I think it's FL. FL. Yeah, so fuel type is FL, okay? Monsa, do you wanna take this one? Yeah, so okay. um, so I just added, so after color is equal to class, I put mm -hmm. a comma, and then I did shape is equal to FL. Okay, exactly. Yep. In this case, I took out color equals class. You can either keep it in or leave it out. It doesn't matter. But yes, to, to influence the shape, you would have shape equals FL. Okay. Good. All right. Excellent. Okay. So let me make a comment here about inside the aesthetic versus outside the aesthetic. Okay. Um, all right, so inside the aesthetic versus outside the aesthetic. Sorry, give me one second, everybody. All right, so uh, so inside the aesthetic versus outside the aesthetic. So, so um, what we did on these last two examples was we added the color equals class to inside of the aesthetic parentheses here, okay? So class is actually inside aesthetic and it's an argument for AES, yeah? You can also add uh, the same kind of code outside of the aesthetic and so that it's actually an argument for geom point, okay? Um, and uh, and then, and that would be a way of of making that code apply to the whole entire visualization. Okay, so something like this: when we had it inside of the aesthetic, you can see it. The, the all the different classes were assigned a color, and those got plotted out this way. Or if you wanted to just assign a new color to everything, remember how it defaulted to black. If you wanted to change that and override it for everything, then you put that code outside of the aesthetic so that it's an argument for geom point. Okay. I'll give you a second for that to, to sink in. Um, let me add this, this other indicator over here that hopefully helps. So if you want the aesthetic to be dic like like color, size, alpha, whatever, to be dictated by a column in your data mapped to a to a column in your data, then the code goes inside the AES. If you want the aesthetic to be a characteristic of the whole graph layer, then the code goes outside the aesthetic. Okay. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense a little bit. And you can play around with that a little bit on your own as well. All right. Any questions? Stop me if you'd like to go over it or if you need another second to look at it. Okay. All right, if not, on we go. All right, so we've talked a little bit about multiple layers. Okay, we get the idea that the first layer is the data, then we start adding on different visualization um, layers, scatter plots, lines, and so on. Uh, one other thing that the book calls out is the idea that if the mapping will apply to all the layers, then they can go in the ggplot section. Okay, so you see how here we have mapping equals aesthetic x, y, and then we repeat the exact same thing for the smooth, for the geome smooth. And now it's mapping aesthetic 
x, y. It's the exact same thing for both of them. Well, if we wanted, instead of having it written in two places, that's sort of, it's a, it's a global instruction. So we can actually promote that all the way up to the ggplot layer. So now we just write it once. We're mapping x to x and y here. Um, and then it'll it'll automatically flow down to the scatter plot and to the uh, into the, the line level. Okay. So this might be a way to make it a little easier. Okay. A little, it's, a, it's a way to clean up the code a little bit. Okay. Good. Thumbs up or head nods, or you want to look at it a different way, or any questions? Okay. All right. Got some thumbs up. All right. So let me, we'll move on then. All right. So we're going to do some exercises now. And the question is this is from exercise 3.6. Okay. And the, he, the, the authors gave us a visualization that was completed, and they asked us to create the R code. That would that would create this visualization. Okay, so it all begins with the same with the same uh, code that we've been looking at. So ggplot data equals mpg plus geom point. Okay, so so let me leave it to you guys then to see what you can do with to recreate this one. Okay, so just a couple of high uh, a couple of hints here. Um, these dots come from geom, uh, geom point, okay, geom underscore point creates these dots. This line right here, the blue line, comes from geom underscore smooth, okay. Now, when you first do this, geom underscore smooth, you're going to get a blue line with a, with a gray, with gray bands on either side of it, okay, and that's like, stand, those are standard error bands. So if you want to remove those, you do that with SE equals false. Okay. So let me give you a minute. You guys can work on that. If you have any problems, you any questions on it, just uh, raise your hand and ask or, or uh, you know, whatever you need to do. And then uh, we'll take a volunteer to who to show, see who wants to, who wants to share their, their results. Okay. We'll let you share your screen. Once we get through that. Okay, so I'll give you a minute. I'm going to go on mute. Give you about 20 more seconds and then Chun Li, do you want to handle this one? I'm still working on it. Okay, no problem. Um, it, whenever, do you need a few more minutes? Uh, yes, let me, let me try, let me finish line, see if it works. Okay.
How about for you, Monson, Colin? You think you got it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think I got it. Okay. I think I have it, but it's not it's not creating any plot. Okay, let's take a look. Why don't you <laughs> yeah. share your screen and then why don't you share your screen and we'll take a look at it. Okay. Deal? Yes. Hey, how to share a screen? Um let's see. You should be able to it should just be a um on the on the zoom toolbar. Uh-huh. There's should be like a screen share. I'm gonna stop sharing mine. Okay. And then there should be like a oh share a, screen yeah, yeah I find it yeah okay. here share all right see this is my oops I, I think okay so this is what I wrote mm -hmm. um I have a GG plot and data is equal to MPG yeah and that data mapping and I mm -hmm. oh oh the, hey, wait a second. I didn't close this one, I guess. Yeah, I think we need it. Yeah, I need that. Oops. I don't want that. Ah. How can I go back? Um, if you hit escape, it should kind of abort that try and give you a new prompt. Okay. There you go. Okay. Um, okay. Wait a second, this is not the one. Yeah. I so, need to type in again. Well, try to hit, if you hit delete, will it bring it all onto the same line? I don't know, maybe. Okay. No, I guess it's, uh, it's okay. up. Okay. I think you. I think you got it though. If I just look at look at the code, uh, other uh -huh. than that closing, other than that closing right. uh, parentheses, um, I think it. The rest of it should work. So yes, hopefully, okay. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think the rest of it's right. So um, why don't I, let me. Copy. Um, Does my work? Uh, another thing you might do, Chun Li, is hit hit Control Shift and um, Control Shift N, and uh -huh. I think that should launch a um, a a uh, what do you call oh, it? A notepad. Oh, and change from there. And you can change it from there, and then run it from there. So maybe you go up to File New. Mm -hmm. New script. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe you can pose, you can paste into there. Right. So it should be ggplot and I have these and close here. Right. Yeah. And then plus this, plus that. Yeah. Let's see if this one is working. You'll need to hit escape. There you yeah. go. No. Okay. I think you got the idea. In any case, I think you got the idea. Okay. Because the code looks right to me. Okay. Yeah. I will, I will try later then. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Then let me, I'm going to go back to sharing mine. Oh, can you, uh, if you'll stop, stop sharing there. yours. Stop share. Okay. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go back to sharing mine. There we go. Okay. All right. So, so yes, yeah, so really the, the key was just adding in geome underscore smooth into that last one, which adds that line in, right? Okay. Everybody good on that? All right. So on the next one, we're going to do the same thing, except the difference here is that these different bands, the lines are going to be broken out based off of the DRV um, column in the data set. Okay. So a couple of the hints, same as before, line means if you want the lines, it comes from geom smooth to remove the error bands. There's a, an argument which is SE equals false. You make the different lines using group equals DRV as, um, as one of the aesthetics. 
then different groupings are for lines. So it's part of geome smooth. So, so we're not grouping the dots, we're grouping the lines, right? So it's the lines that are breaking based off of a different, um, a different variable. So the line is the geome smooth. So this grouping that you're gonna do is gonna be part of the geome smooth aesthetic, okay? And since it's mapped to a variable, it's gonna be inside the aesthetic. So I'm going to stop talking for a second so you can read over this and try to make a little more sense of it by reading rather than me talking through it. And then I'll give you a second. And then Monsa, do you want to try this one? Once you get the, once you get the results, you can share your screen and we can look at it. Well, so just let us know when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I tried two ways. And okay. Okay. Why don't you share your screen and we'll take a look. Okay. Can you see this or I don't know? Um, it's pretty well zoomed in. <laughs> there we go. Oh, but now is it better? There we go. That's better. Yep. Okay. So first of all, I just tried this. I put it directly here, even though we are not supposed to do it here, but it worked, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I tried it inside this, and this also worked. But I didn't. I didn't use group. I used class. Uh, you're supposed to use group. Yeah, that's. I'm not sure exactly why class would have worked. So class. Um, any. If anybody has any ideas on why it would work to say class equals DRV. Um, because I would think that the class, the word class would have to be one, an, an aesthetic, like a given aesthetic for the, for that geome. Um, so I don't know, any, any thoughts? Colin, any thoughts on why that would, would have worked? So this is the second plot. Um, I use class too as well, but I use it up in as like a global aesthetic, yeah. and it works mm -hmm. for me. You but, use class equals DRV. Yeah, were we supposed to use group? Uh, I, I had I had pulled that off of one of the solution sets. So that, I, I've used I use class, but I'm trying yeah. to figure out. Let me look up. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm just looking at like some of the docs right now and seeing if there's like any difference in the definition. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, if it works. Yeah. Hey, how to turn that on? How to turn that uh, feature on? Where you can see what uh, variables to take it. Uh, go to the help. 
Uh, well, you can just do a, put a question mark in front of whatever it is that you need help to look at. So oh, okay. question mark geom smooth, you could do question mark MPG to find out about the data set or question mark, whatever. Well, when I use the DRV, it keeps telling me DRV is not, is, what? Not found. Hmm. If you, Chun Li, if you mm -hmm. type in, um, if you type in just MPG by itself, mm -hmm. do you get any results or does it say there's an error? Uh, yes, I can see DRV in there. Oh, okay. Right. May I, may I, did it call it as the object? The DRV, well, it's, it's all lowercase. Uh, we can take a look at that one in a second. Okay. Should I stop sharing my screen? No, so did we figure out um, the difference between using class equals DRV versus group equals DRV? No, so I was looking, I, I went back to the, I went and looked at like GM smooth and was looking at like the aesthetics that are listed. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there's group, but there's no class. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know if there, I can't find anything for like an aesthetic of class. Yeah. Know. So I mean, it works. It looks like it works unless there's like a very minor difference and I just don't know the difference and I can't find it, but I, I'm, I might have to do a little bit more digging because now, now you got me curious. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, it seems like it would be what I would think is it would be trying to match the variable class to the variable DRV. Like it's almost like you're, you're equating two columns from the data set together. And that I would think would, would generate an error, but um, <clears throat> okay. We can look into that one then a little bit more, but hey, it worked, you know, you got it. You presented it to your boss. They loved it. You got a promotion. So good job, Monsa. So, um, all right, Chun Li, did you want to look at? Do you want to look at yours? Um, I, that's okay. I think I figured out. I, I didn't. I didn't add the mapping. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I just uh, have it right next to the SE. So it didn't take it as a. It took okay. it as a, a different object. I see. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right, then if we're ready, I will go back and share my screen and we can move on to the next, <clears throat> the next exercise here. All right. So for, so we've looked at it. This is, this was the answer that I had, um, including in the aesthetic here, group equals DRV uh, under smooth. So, um, it looks, I think everybody captured that. All right. So the difference here now is that we're going to use colors, get colors involved. So a lot of the same things, line mean comes from Geom Smooth. That's a way to remove the error bands. So make different colors using color equals DRV. So the four, the F and the R would be mapped to the colors okay, from the, from the DRV column. Um, grouping is mapped to a variable, so it's in the aesthetic, and the color aesthetic is global to capture point and line. So, uh, yeah, one other thing to call out here is that we don't just have, it's not just the line that's green with the, with the points being black, or the line being red with the points being black. Instead, we've got red line and red points. We've got a blue line and blue points, and same with green. So, so with that being the case, you can make sure you can have the, uh, the, the color equals DRV that can be at a global level. So all the way up at the GG plot line versus having it within the geome smooth line. Okay. So I'll give you guys a second to work on that.
soon as anybody's ready on this one, put your, uh, give me a wave or something and we'll let you take a look at it. This one will probably go to you, Colin. It's your turn next. All right, you guys ready to take a look at what Colin came up with? Okay, go ahead and share your screen, Colin. Okay, can everybody see my mm -hmm. our studio? Yep. Okay, so this is how I did it. Um, I put it all in global mappings. So, mm -hmm. uh, so basically you just have the, what's different is we have the same aesthetics on the X and Y, and then on the color you have drive. And then because it's global, it will pass it on to geom point, geom smooth, yeah. and you get rid of the lines with the SC equals false. So you get rid of the, the SC bands. Yeah. Yeah. And then run it again. And there's the plots. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm, can I ask Colin how how did you have this display where you can, where yeah, you can so, see different things, different colors? Yeah, so uh, mine's gonna be a little bit different um, from everybody else. There's a couple things different is is my I put my console over up here on the top right. Um, mm -hmm. You can change your colors in. Um, it depends on if you're on a Mac or Windows, but because I'm on a Mac, if you go to like R Studio. Mm -hmm. and go to preferences can you still see the options mm -hmm. you can go to appearance and then you can choose whatever one you want i've downloaded this one and use it because i like it a lot better but there's a ton of them that you can change if you want to okay. if you want to if you want to get super custom with it i guess mm -hmm. but um yeah so that's that's basically how i have it um for this kind of plot right here all right. Awesome. Everybody good on that? Okay. Great. All right. There's one last uh, one last practice here in this group. So I had the uh, yeah same thing with the display. Oh, sorry. The X, the Y, and then the color being being up there. All right. Okay. So then in this last one. Um, the color aesthetic is only for the points, not for the line. So that there's one line. The lines are not being broken up by, by DRV. So it's just one single line for everything. Um, and then there's no color being assigned to it. Okay. So I'll give you a minute to, to try to duplicate that one. So in this one, it'll be important to keep track of which which line, uh, which layer you have the, the color equals DRV applied to. I'll let anybody volunteer who wants to take this one as soon as you're ready. Full color group.
Is anybody ready with the with the final draft? Um, I think I got it. Okay. Let's take a look. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Cool. And which, where do you have the code? Um, so, right. yeah, it, 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 it definitely much easier to add it from here. Yeah. I just copy uh, this three lines and I remove the, the color and a group uh, from the ggplot. Mm -hmm. Instead, uh, I insert them into the geom point. Yeah. Because that's where the colors need to buy group, right? And right. then for the smooth line, uh, force it to blue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It seems to work. Very good. Excellent. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right. We're getting close to the end. Good job, everybody. That was uh, was pretty cool to watch. I think you guys are really getting the idea on that one. So so it's it's cool. Thank you. Um, we're getting close to the end of the time here and getting to the end of of the slides as well. So I'll make sure we end right on time. Um, last couple of things here, statistical transformation. Um, as the, what it says in the book here is the algorithm, the statistical transformation, the algorithm used to, to calculate new values for a graph is called a stat. And as long as I tried to think about that, I, I couldn't quite get it. Um, this is the best that I could come up to, uh, to try to explain this. I mentioned early on that we had just gotten done with a road trip. Okay. And so what I've created here is a small data set, which has the number of times we stopped for gas, which state we stopped in um, twice in Texas, twice in Louisiana, once in Alabama and once in Kentucky. And then the amount of gas that we spent each time to fill up the, the car. Yeah. So the stat each geome has a default stat, okay? So if you don't specify a stat, but you wanna create a bar chart, then it's just going to count the number of, of, of records that you have in there. So that's what it does on a, under a bar chart. Alabama, there was only one entry for Alabama. And so that, goes, that bar goes to one. There was only one entry for Kentucky. So that bar goes to one. There were two entries each for Louisiana and Texas. So, so two comes up. So, so each of those has two um, go, uh, levels on the bar, right? But, but that's only so meaningful. What, what would really be interesting is to know how much gas did we spend in each state? In order to do that, you have to change the stat so that you're no longer um, calculating the number of times that a certain category shows up you're now calculating a different column. So the sum of the gas cost, and now you can see in Alabama, it's 21, Kentucky, it's 19, Louisiana, it's 27 plus 19, 46, whatever that is. Um, uh, that's where that comes in. And then for Texas, right? So the stat, the idea behind the stat is, is how is it gonna calculate whether it's going to calculate the number of records that show up for each, whether it's going to add up um, different things in a certain column, whether it's going to take averages and so on. Okay. Um, since we're getting a little bit short on time, I'm going to leave further discussion on that topic for maybe next time um, and try to wrap up what we've got left. So if we can, so I wanted to put up here really quick, um, some of the same resources that we had for last week about how to get help. Um, it's just the same thing, but I want to keep in front of everybody. Stack Overflow, Slack, the office hours for the Slack um, uh, user group that we have, our stats, hashtag our stats, um, the answer keys, cheat sheets, and so on. Okay. All right. Um, so then I have a question. Yes, of course. Yeah. How do I find the office hours channel? Yeah, so just slide. go to, if you go to this website, r4ds.io slash calendar, mm -hmm. 
it'll have a list of everybody okay. that has office hours and when those office hours are. And I think it might refresh based off of your time zone. Um, is that what mm -hmm. you, so you, you may be able to just go on on that way. Um, I haven't used office hours yet. I haven't used anybody's office hours, but um, I, I believe that, you know, there's people there. So if you have questions, okay, cool. All right, so then for next week, uh, we can go back and maybe talk about statistical transformations a little bit, but then also cover chapter four, chapter five, whatever we might want to get into. Um, the next couple of chapters use the NYC Flights 13 data. So you can look through that. Tidyverse, load the NYC Flights 13 data. It doesn't automatically load. And then you can hit question mark and then explore the NYC Flights 13 data. Okay. Um, so that's what I think we will cover for next week. Um, at this, having said that, I expect I may be driving on the road next week during our time. So I can, it would probably be best if I just join in to listen as a, as a listener or an observer um, rather than to actually lead the discussion. So if there's anybody that would like to take up chapters four and five for next week, then that would be, that would be much, uh, much help for me. Um, if not, we can, we can maybe postpone, but. Um, I can take it if, if you need to, Ryan, I can take that, it. That'd be great. I appreciate it. So I'll leave it up to you, whatever topics you want to cover. Um, as you know, we're, we're right here in, in chapters four and five and, and maybe a little bit of chapter three. If you're, if you're a whiz on statistical transformations, I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. So, um, well, good. So I hope that's helpful for everybody. And, um, if not those, uh, those, um, those uh, questions are, are obviously in the book. There's lots of exercises to go through and you can go through them multiple times and lots of resources to get help on that. So with that and our time being up, I wanted to thank you guys for joining again this week and good luck. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with and we will meet again next time. Under Sounds Collins, good. Under Collins tutelage. I'll try my best. <laughs> Very good. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank, Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye. Bye-bye.